and then I got the this idler as well. This, so I'm just going to throw them on. See how they look. Give me something to do. So basically, this screws onto the cylinder head. There, there, and there. Right, oh. So that's basically power steering. Dummy power steering pulleys. another thing far out now this is in the road so how do give you this it's gonna sit there which gives you more clearance ay 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 it's like every time I try and get something done something else pops up and I can't so if that sits there there's still room for this So this is a Malix Motorsport dummy power steering pulley and that, I'm sure that works fine by itself and then this is the little idler that you get with the Harrop kit and I'm sure that works fine by itself with an actual power steering pump. So this one I need to run, this one I'll have to sort out something else that doesn't use these mounts. So the purpose of this one, this pulley here, is to basically the supercharger's pulley's going to be up here somewhere so it's going to come off the water pump around this charger pulley down around this so the job of this pulley is just to increase the wrap on the blower pulley itself back down here then up over the power steering and then down to the alternator so they don't have to exactly be there as long as there's a, some, a nice pull down. So I'm just going to see if I can muck around with these two things and work something out. So I had an idea. So I've got, obviously this is the, the idler from the Harrop kit. And that probably sits over there. And I was looking at that. And I thought, what if we had that here, and it stuck out, so then you could have the belt go down, it could wrap around there, it could come up over here, and then down the alternator. So this one bracket would hold the two pulleys. So, I 3D printed this little spool, this little spacer, and the idea being it sits inside that, exactly like this does you can see that's basically the same thing sits inside there goes inside like that right so this is basically that and then need a longer bolt like that would slide on like that So we've got enough clearance there. The belt around the supercharger, down there, under there, up over there, and then down to the alternator. So that alignment is perfect because I measured this and this, and everything looks good. All I'd have to do is get that plastic spool made out of Anyway, get that made out of aluminium or steel and sit that there and that might be a solution to my problem. And the other night I was thinking about belt paths and you know why do I have to have all this extra pulleys here and then I thought do I even need a power steering delete? What if the Harrop 
pulley comes down and goes around that and then goes down to the alternator and just completely bypasses this so not sure if the alignment will work i think it will become very close so i'm just going to rip this off reinstall the harrop pulley and just see what that belt path would look like then so i might be onto something there you can see it is possible um this nut here the bolt head holding the alternator on might get in the road and then this obviously needs to be a flat pulley not a ribbed pulley but if that had a smaller diameter we might be onto something let's see what spares i've got how many people do the classic stitch up where you undo a bolt and then it gets bottoms out on wherever you're undoing it into and then you can't reach behind it to change the direction and you can't get it off you just sit there like an idiot look what i found i think this may have actually been the original one for that position because i ran a different belt path this one's about five mil shorter in diameter throw that on and see what she looks like it's hard to get this belt tight but you can see there there's only millimeters in it pull that as tight as i can so if that pulley down here was smaller you'd be on a winner and then this one is in its normal position and has the right wrap and then we don't have all this junk hanging out here for no reason so i might explore getting a smaller pulley for there a smaller idler like that one that'd be perfect i'm glad you're watching them because i just had another moment of greatness another epiphany if you will i'm not actually sure if i need that idler anymore either the one down here because by putting this in so this one used to put more wrap on the water pump pulley so it needed to be there and if i just went straight off the tensioner around the water pump and down to the alternator it might not have put enough wrap on here so by it the belt coming up now onto the supercharger pulley it increases the wrap on the water pump having this here directs it down to the alternator fine around the crank back up to the tensioner there's nothing wrong with that i think we might be on let's have to deal with this this bolt oh yeah that's going to touch actually i'm going to have a larger diameter crank pulley now too so that that bolt's not going to be a worry so we could always put that bolt here all right we're getting somewhere we're just getting there very slowly all right oh you can see there ground the edge of that down just going to throw it back in and see if the clearance is enough just found an easier way than using a belt you can just see that clearance there on that bolt Right, yeah, folks, we're back with the idler saga. Um, I spoke to Harrop about running from here, from the Harrop idler pulley, straight down to here, and then onto the crank. And if I thought add a picture in here or whatever just to show you, they said there wouldn't be enough belt wrap on the crank pulley itself if I went from here to there. So, so obviously I was using that method for the alternator before. There's not a lot of load on these these drives. So this is, I guess this is the drive and these are driven pulleys. So there wasn't a lot of load on those. And as a result, I wouldn't have been getting any belt slip on that crank pulley. But if you go and add a supercharger, which is a lot of driven load, there's potential for it to slip if there's not enough belt wrap. So really this belt needs to come back up here and over there which gives it another whatever that is 90 degrees of belt wrap so we're back to needing a pulley here uh, as you saw with this path it's very narrow there and the original pulley that goes in the ls1s is 76 mil and i had this one which is a, a ribbed pulley not a flat pulley and it's roughly the same a little bit bigger so what we really need is a smaller diameter pulley so, some overnight parts from Japan. Got a new line pulley, EP251, which is 54 mil instead of 76. Same ID, same width, just smaller diameter. So we're gonna throw that on and see what the belt path looks like now. Hopefully we've got some clearance. So I've only just got enough belt to simulate that belt path, but you can see there I've got a good 10 or 12 mil gap between those now so we got good crank pulley wrap idler pulley alternator harrop idler and then blower so we're on the money gonna leave it at that 
and keep moving forward. Righto, so we've sorted out the pulleys, pulley situation sorted out. Um, we've sorted out the throttle body, we know the throttle body is going to work so we can basically start removing things from this engine so it can't sort of run now. So the next thing to do is probably remove this radiator because we've got the new one there. When this is out we'll be able to drill the crank, sorry, actually we've got to take the balancer off, put the new balancer on which is a larger one, then we'll have to measure up a belt size for the aircon pulley, drill the crank, then put the new radiator in. So that's my Malix Motorsport uh, aircon compressor with the bracket. That's a, like a low mount, 25% underdrive balancer. So that's what we're going to change to a bigger normal size one. Get that nut off, and then yeah, that's the new belt part. So drive up to the tensioner under the water pump over the blower, back down through here, down around the alternator, up through here to get wrap on the crank pulley. Bit of a mess down there. Right, there's the two different size pulleys. You got the underdrive one here, which is about 157 mil, and then you got the new standard size, which is about 190 mil. So that's the same profile. I think it's like a four rib for the aircon, and this one's got eight rib for the normal belt, as this only has six. But the profile is still the same. Yeah, so I'm just going to throw this bad boy on. You can see it's got the threaded, I think it must be an 8mm thread for a Gilmer drive if you so desire to put one of those on down the track. So that was extremely lucky. I just um, checking some of the other belt sizes I got from back when I originally had this aircon installed in it looks like a 945 four pack might do the job it's only the aircon that that's driving but yeah we'll see how see what we can do about the belt links up here also extremely RC, but one of the spare belts I had, so my original belt was a 6 pack 1385 and I'll just add a 1970 there so I'll just <laughs> put that on and it actually does the whole path by the blower which is going to be up here, so the blower, this is going to come up here, go around the blower, back down here, this side down to there but I mean that's a flat pulley not a rib pulley so not ideal but if I needed to start this and run the pump whatever that would probably work <laughs> <laughs> 